Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we'll speak about mitochondrial oxidation and the structure of the electron transfer chain. So glucose, for example, is metabolized by a series of oxidation reactions, ultimately yielding carbon dioxide and water. Now the intermediates donate electrons to specific coenzymes like NAD and FAD, which are nicotinamide, adenine, dinucleotide and flavin to form energy-rich reduced coenzymes like NADH and FADH2. These can then donate a pair of electrons to a specialized set of electron carriers, collectively called the electron transfer chain or electron transport chain. Part of this energy can be captured and stored by the production of ATP from ADP and an inorganic phosphate. This process is called oxidative phosphorylation and it is present or it occurs in the inner mitochondrial membrane. This is the electron transfer chain. Now the inner mitochondrial membrane can be disrupted into five separate protein complexes. So they're called complexes 1, 2, 3, 4 and there is a fifth one. So complexes 1 to 4 each contain part of the electron transfer chain. Each complex accepts or donates electrons to relatively mobile electron carriers such as coenzyme Q that you can see and cytochrome C. Each carrier in the electron transfer chain can receive electrons from an electron donor and can subsequently donate electrons to the next carrier in the chain. The electrons ultimately combine with oxygen and protons to form water in the fifth complex. Okay, let's see how this works. Starting with NADH, so starting with complex one is NADH dehydrogenase. So it removes the hydrogen from the NADH and in this complex, NADH gives off four hydrogen molecules or ions. Moving on to complex three, it surpasses uh, complex 2. So complex 3 is cytochrome BC1. In this complex again it gets oxidized and it gives four hydrogen ions. In complex 4 which is cytochrome C oxidase high, um, the NAD gets oxidized and gives us only two hydrogen ions. So what is the total number of NA, uh, hydrogen ions we have from one molecule of NAD, we have 10 molecules, 4 from complex 1, 4 from complex 3, and 2 from complex 4. Now let's move on to FAD. Now flavin does not go to complex 1, it goes to complex 2, which is succinate dehydrogenase. And here there is no oxidation from complex 2. It is carried uh, by coenzyme Q to complex 3. Here, it will do the same. So it will get oxidized and give four molecules of hydrogen. And then in complex four, it will give us two molecules of hydrogen. So the total number of hydrogen ions that we get from one FAD is only six. Why? Four from complex three and two from complex four. In the fifth complex, ATPase um, or ATP synthase makes ATP. Now four hydrogen ions combine to make one ATP. Therefore, the 10 from NADH will give us 2.5 ATPs and the 6 hydrogen ions from FADH will give us 1.5 ATPs. There is something called chemiosmotic hypothesis or theory. It's also known as Michel's hypothesis or Michel's theory. It explains how the free energy generated by the transport of the electrons by the chain is used to produce the ATP from ADP and inorganic phosphate. Now the electron transport is coupled to the phosphorylation of ADP by the transport or the pumping of the protons which are the hydrogen ions across the inner mitochondrial membrane to the intermembrane space at complexes 1, 3 and 4. Now this process it creates an electrical gradient uh, with more positive charges on the outside of the membrane than on the inside as you can see in the picture. And a uh, generates a pH gradient as well. So the outside of the membrane is at a lower pH than the inside. Now complex 5 is a protein complex that contains a domain 
FO that spans the inner mitochondrial membrane and domain F1 that appears as a sphere that protrudes into the mitochondrial matrix. Complex 5 catalyzes ATP synthesis and so is referred to as ATP synthase. Now, inhibitors are those that inhibit the electron transfer chain or the oxidative phosphorylation. So, for example, we have oligomycin. Um, this binds to the F domain of the ATP synthase, closing the hydrogen ion channels, preventing the re-entry of the protons into the mitochondrial matrix, so preventing the chemiosmotic theory. So this stops the catalysis of ADP into ATP, and it stops the chain. Then you have uncoupling proteins, so they create a proton leak, which also affects the chemiosmotic theory. Non-shivering thermogenesis is the energy of the protons re-entering the mitochondrial ma matrix without the energy being captured as ATP. So the um, chain is not completed and this causes thermogenesis because the energy is transferred into heat energy instead of going into the catalysis of the ATP. Examples of uncoupling proteins are UCP1, 2, or UCP3, etc. Even aspirin, the medicine, can increase the permeability of the inner membrane, causing proton leak and disrupting the electron transfer chain. That is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you in my next one. Bye.